Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Women Tech Pioneers. My name is Tanisha, and I am joined here today with Sarissa. Sarissa, how are you doing? Good. How's it going? <laughs> it's good, and I am really pumped. I am so excited to um, dive into our tech pioneers today. You're going to learn a lot about four really awesome women. So I'm going to go ahead and stop talking and turn off my camera. And Sarissa, I'm going to go ahead and let you take it away. Okay. Um, we are going to get started here. I am going to turn off my camera so we can focus on the slides and I can give you all the information that I have on these four amazing women in tech who have blazed the way in their own ways for other women and, and girls to continue careers in a very prominent field nowadays. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. I am excited. Let's go. All right, so we have here, is it? There we go. Nope. Um, we're going to start with a book shout out here. Um, we have this one is on Hoopla, available to those with a library card through Hillsbury County, Hillsborough County. We it is called Women in Technology. Um, it is by Elizabeth Schmermond. That's a very difficult last name to say. <laughs> um, it's got some good stuff, good, so good resources. It is only available on Hoopla, but you'll be able to search it on there and check it out digitally on any electronic device you might have. First, we have Carol Shaw. I don't know if anybody here actually plays video games. I do myself. Um, I happen to play a lot, probably more than I should, but it's it's a lot of fun. Um, and Carol Shaw was one of the first women to break into the video game field. Um, it was a very, and still is, a very male-dominated field. Um, she was born in 1955. Um, she was actually the first world's first female professional video game designer. She worked for Atari. Um, if anybody is old enough to remember Atari or know what Atari is, she also has worked for Activision, which is another video game developer that's still very prominent and popular today. Um, she created uh, a game called River Raid, which sold over 1 million cartridges. Um, and those sales actually helped her to retire early uh, where she just kind of lived comfortably. Um, she was also the go-to coder in Atari for trickier programming tasks. So if somebody had an issue, they'd, you know, go find her and be able to ask her questions and she'd help them out. Um, she had she had worked on several different games between Atari and Activision. Um, she definitely uh, blazed the way for other women to work within the video game profession. Um, she's worked on games called 3D Tic-Tac-Toe, which took her six months to create, Video Checkers, and Super Breakout. Um, she, her career, although was short from 1978 to 1984, she really did put her own stamp and mark on the video game um profession and and field um she's kind of downplayed her her uh part in the video game history but she's very much there and she's very very prominent and and credited for coming up with for being a woman in tech um in 2017, she was given the Industry Icon Award uh, by the Game Awards. So she has definitely earned her place and uh, her notary, notoriety within the tech field. Next, we have Hedy Lamar. If anybody has heard of Hedy Lamar, it's probably because she was a very famous actress. Um, she is also known as the mother of Wi-Fi. Little does 
a lot of people know um, that she actually dabbled with uh, inventions and within tech. Um, it really comes down to her. If it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth technology that we would have today. Um, she was born in Austria in 1914. At the age of five, she disassembled and reassembled a music box because she wanted to, um, which is pretty impressive. I don't think I could do that myself at, at my age now. Um, she's always pretty much been interested within uh, tech and inventions. Um, during World War II, she did invent a device, or she tried to, oh my goodness, sorry. She tried to invent a device to block enemy ships um, by jamming the torpedo signals. Uh, she worked with a composer who was known as an eccentric composer um, by the name of George Anthill. Um, they never received compensation for this project or for the concept that they came up with. Um, it was called frequency hopping, where it just kind of, it would take a uh, message and it would make it impossible for the enemy to locate and block said message before it moved to another frequency. So if they're trying to track enemy ships, the frequencies of the enemies would hop around so they could not be located. Um, it's a component for modern day Wi-Fi um, communication systems or the wireless communication systems, including Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, she was honored with the Pioneer Award of Electronic Frontier Foundation in 1997. She was also the first woman to receive the Invention Conventions Bulby Nass Spirit of, of Achievement Award. That is a mouthful. And she was also inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2014 after her death. Um, her son has been, it has been said that she was inventing all the way up to her death. Um, one of the things she did come up with was, I gotta find it here. I think one of them was like a dog collar. Yeah, a fluorescent dog collar. Uh, modifications for a Concorde airliner and a new kind of stoplight. So she was still, um, even up to her death, trying to come up with new ideas and new inventions. Um, she did die at the age of 85 in January 2000 in Florida. But she, her son has said that she would have been pleased with the legacy, legacy of her frequency hopping and because of that concept, she is known as the mother of Wi-Fi, as well as a very famous actress. Ellen Ochoa, some may have heard of her. She um, is a former astronaut, as well as the former director of the Johnson Space Center in Houston. She was born in 1958. Um, she was the first Hispanic woman in space in 1993. She's flown four times, which puts her at nearly a thousand hours of flight in orbit. Um, she was the first Hispanic and the second woman director of the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. So she really blazed the way for not only women, but also Hispanic women specifically to, to set an example and become a model or a hero for, for those young girls that would want to become astronauts and by all means do it if you can and want to. Um, not only has she been an astronaut, she's also the co-inventor on three pat patents in the area of optical information processing. Um, not quite sure what that is exactly, but that's something that I'm sure I would be able to find out. Um, probably a little too technical for myself <laughs> but she's definitely she's um the co-inventor on those she has six schools named after her and she's also given more than 300 stem presentations um 
just the importance of science, technology, engineering, math um, within schools and other places. So she's really outspoken about the importance of STEM when it comes to um, kids and learning it in schools. Um, she was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal, which is actually the highest award you can get within NASA. She uh, has definitely paved the way for, for many um, girls and women to um, enter the science field. We all hear about Sally Ride and Mae Jameson, but Ellen Ochoa is, is somebody who's blazed the trail for, for women and girls in her own right. Lastly, we have, and I apologize if I pronounce this wrong, um, because she is Japanese, is Chieko Asakawa, if I have pronounced that wrong. I do apologize, I hate pronouncing names wrong. Names wrong, and I looked it up and my brain went blank. So I am hoping I pronounced that correctly. Um, she was also born in 1958 in Japan. She was born with full sight. However, um, she became blind at the age of 14. Uh, she has worked for the better accessibility for those who needed it within the technology world. Um, she has she has uh, been working since 1980s to help those who need that accessibility who are disabled um, have an easier time navigating not only the world but also the internet which is very important in today's world um, she did digital braille work which is still helping those in japan access digital braille books um, she joined ibm in 1985 i don't know once again if anybody would be old enough to remember or know, but she did, she developed the IBM homepage reader, which reads web pages out to those who cannot see. It was made available in 1997 to um, Japan, US, Europe, and across Asia. Um, so it helps those who couldn't see and who, needed it uh, use this voice browser that was groundbreaking at that time. Um, <clears throat> she is a computer scientist. She's worked with IBM for a number of years. I'm not quite sure if she's still there. I haven't seen if she is or isn't. Um, she was a little bit harder to look up, a little bit more unknown, but she still deserves all the recognition that is out there for her. She was inducted into the Women in Technology International Hall of Fame in 2003. The Japan government actually awarded her the Medal of Honor with a purple ribbon in 2013. Um, she has been, and I don't know if she still is, um, but as of looking up the um, information on her, she was working on an AI uh, artificial intelligence suitcase that will help blind users navigate complicated terrain and um, like crowded terrain. Um, so that's something else that she's working on and she has been trying to develop. Um, she has been earning her own name in place within the tech community by trying to come up with um, better solutions and options for those who need the accessibility um unfortunately there aren't there's more now than there has been but there's still a limited number of options for those who do need that accessibility and she's definitely one of the um leaders in that area within tech and those are the four women we have i think i just went too fast on that and there are a couple of uh, fun home activities within the handouts if you would like to do those at home. And there's a couple of more book recommendations. 
Um, one of them is only on Hoopla, and then the other is both on Hoopla and within the library system as physical books. So I recommend that you guys check those out and read up more and discover more women within, you know, the STEM STEM fields that are out there and hopefully they will inspire you to do your own thing. And that's it. All right, thank you, Sarissa, so much for doing the profiles on those four women. I know that I just learned a lot. Um, there's <laughs> so much good information that you gave us. So a few things about what Sarissa has covered here. So as she mentioned, there are some handouts in the handout section, some great fun activities, some great fun home activities for any little ones or any little ones that you may know um, that were watching this today. So I definitely um, highly recommend that you download those. And also, if you are looking for the book recommendations, remember you can always do a simple search in at the library's website and those books will pop straight up and you'll be able to see where um, they are. Um, and so whether they're not they're available on Hoopla, Overdrive as a physical book, you'll always be able to see how they are available. And something great to know about Hoopla is that the books are always instantly available. So everybody can check out those books at the same time. Yes. So um, this is a chance for you to put in questions. And I know that we already have some. So we got people who already have their questions. So let All me right. go ahead and bring those up. So um, the first one is, um, somebody just wants to um, Arik, um, to know who was the first woman you covered. Oh, she, her Carol Shaw. So let me go ahead and go back. Carol Shaw. She's kind of okay. slipped into the background um, more. She isn't too uh, like front and center. I don't. I really want to say recluse, but she kind of is like. I've done my thing, so <laughs> I'm done now, kind of a thing, so. Okay, cool, thank you. And something also that's really um, interesting, and the same thing I noticed um, when I was doing my African-American tech pioneers, uh, when I did the African-American tech pioneers program, is how much crossover there is between the people who are heavy in the tech field, and I think mm. of, and, um, in the creative field. So I think of, for example, Hedy Lamar, who was a yeah. um, actress. So a lot, there's a lot. So, I mean, there's STEAM for a reason, right? Like they put that the, that art in there in the STEM fields for a reason, because there's a lot of crossover. Definitely. All right, and we also have somebody asking, what is digital braille? Oh, digital braille. So, you know, <laughs> I did not actually look into that. Um, I don't want to give the wrong answer. Um, so that would be, I hmm, I could probably tell you what it. I think it is. And it probably sounds like it'd be something where it's read out loud, possibly. But I can't say for sure. And I so don't want to give the nice wrong information. <laughs> So one of the nice things about being a moderator, Sarissa, is that I get to see the questions beforehand. <laughs> and I actually did a quick, I looked it up really quick because I want okay. <laughs> to know too. And I'm like, oh, that's a good question. So um, digital braille, electronic braille. And I, again, I just looked it up. So I didn't know anything beforehand. I, I am reading it off of my phone. So what it, um, digital braille is, is it's actually a display that creates, it's a, it, creates a digital braille so it connects to your keyboard it looks like and it's able to create braille in like a key like based on what's on the screen so the person can read it with their fingers so it's something that works together it looks like it's a device oh, cool. that works with like a laptop or a tablet that's able to digitally create the braille for you which is really really cool <laughs> that is cool i didn't think really to look cool. it up when i wrote it when i was doing it so i was like hey you know this is a thing this is a great thing about library programs we get a bunch of questions and we all get to learn something not only our attendees but the people who do it as well so that is the great thing about having um you know getting to see the questions in advance um another question for you 
Uh, what is something that surprised you to learn when you were researching the program? I think it was the fact that Carol Shaw was, I don't know, I guess out there. Um, as someone who plays video games, I really don't know a lot of like the industry's history. Um, so it was really interesting to see that there was a woman and she created this entire game for Atari that was put out and it sold that many, you know, cartridges. It was that possible or popular. And she was just like, all right, I'm going to retire early. And she was just like, I'm out. So I think that was really cool because it, to me, being interested in video games, it was really one of those things that I was able to learn myself. And it was really, it was really fun. And I liked it a lot. So. Yeah, that, that's true. And you know, that's, there's Women's History Month for a reason. So this is a good opportunity to, for us to learn about, you know, more obscure people that we would have never, I would have never known this um, lady existed if I didn't, if I wasn't here with the program today. And <laughs> so this one's gonna, <laughs> this one I had a nice little chuckle at. Um, we have a participant in the audience who wants to know what Atari is. Okay, so <laughs> Atari, way back before Nintendo and PlayStation, um, I don't know if it was the the very, very first game system, but it is one of the very earliest game systems. Um, there was, I know Pong was the most popular game where you just had the little, the paddles and it bounced the ball back and forth. And that game got really frustrating after a while. Um, you just came with the little joystick and it was a thing you just take like it was almost like a nintendo cartridge an early nintendo cartridge and you just pop it in and then plug it into the tv and you go i you know what sarissa i wonder if some of our attendees even know what a nintendo cartridge is they're, <laughs> you know, they're they like, still wait, exist there are still little, little handheld Nintendo systems that have the little cartridges. Are, you're These absolutely things are like right. Bigger, you're absolutely but... <laughs> right. All right. So um, it looks like for now that that's the the all of the questions that we have for now. But we still have a few more minutes left. So if anybody has any last minute things that they want to drop in there, go ahead and do so. Sarissa, if you could go to our last slide for me. Yes. Um, so we can go ahead and I'm going to give people a few more uh, minutes here to go ahead and drop any last minute questions for us. Um, so as we end all of our programs, if you need to contact us in any way by phone, email, text, um, chat, any way that you can think of, um, there is our contact information there along with our phone number. We'd love to hear from you. Also, this um, program was part of our Women's History Month. Um, so this was the last program of women's history, but we do have quite a few, we have some others that we um, have on our YouTube channel. So definitely check those out. And also on that link, we have some really awesome book lists as well. Some really, really cool book lists with some really great reads for all ages, for the little ones all the way up to adults. Also, if you are interested in any of our other upcoming class and events, I have we have the um, the link there as well. So you can see everything that the library has to offer to you and let me do one more sweep oh we got some lovely comments so we have a lot of people saying thank you so thank you for putting this program together thank yeah, you for all of it so yes and i think that is a wonderful way to conclude so thank you so much sarissa for teaching us about some wonderful tech pie women Tech pioneers. Yes, thank you um, for coming. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for joining us this evening. Um, thank you, everybody. We hope you all have a great evening. And good night, everyone.